Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Bonsai's Forever. My name is Jay, and I've got a really cool tree here today that I want to share with you guys. I just picked it up. Um, it's a, basically, it's a box store bonsai tree. Um, it is something that is used um, in bonsai um, worldwide, uh, but it's one of those type of trees that you can just go to if you're in the States, you can go to like a Walmart, Home Depot, or Lowe's and pick one up. It's They're relatively inexpensive. And I was just thinking that I would do a video on one of these just so that you could see some other options on um, trees that you could use as bonsai and uh, for, a, for a cheap price or an inexpensive price. Um, the tag really doesn't say much about the tree. Uh, so I looked it up because I've never had one of these before. It's called a, a Fukan tree or a tea tree. Um, and, and so I, I looked up some information on it. It says that it is not pet safe. So if you have cats, I would probably avoid this tree because cats are crazy. They eat everything, especially plants. Um, so I would avoid it. If you have little children, I would keep it up away from the kids. Um, so some of the other information that it talks about is the... Um, the watering and the the temperatures and all that stuff. So the, the temperatures, you don't want to let it get below 60 degrees or it will start suffering from that. Um, it does say you don't want to get it above 72 degrees, but I think we're going to find that out this summer because obviously it's way hotter than 72 degrees here in Florida um, and most of, most of the United States anyway. So I know that a lot of people live other places, but you know what your climate is and you go from there it could be could be an indoor tree i'm going to change the camera angle for you guys um so the um what am i thinking the uh the humidity at the website that i looked at said you don't want to let the humidity drop below 40 percent which 40 percent is really low so if you live in like arizona or the Sahara Desert or, you know, some place that there is very little to no rain or it's really, really dry um, in a house that the heater is running all the time or the air conditioning is running all the time could get below 40%. Um, if you're in a situation where it's going to get below 40%, just get one of the humidity trays and stick under it. Put some, some gravel or something so the tree's not sitting in the water. And I did just water this. It was dry when I got it. Um, so that the, the pot's not sitting in the water. You want the pot to sit above the water, but you have the humidity tray so that it produces humidity around it. Um, so I think what I, I want to do with this tree is to kind of go over some of the things that you can find when you get a tree from a, like a box store and what things you want to take care of like kind of right away with this stuff so in this instance they put this um fake moss on here it might be real moss but it's not alive and when i first got it it was crunchy so i did water it so now it's it's flexible and it looks kind of like moss but it's obviously painted it's not a normal color of green so I'm going to get rid of that first. I'm going to grab a tray. So I'm going to get rid of that first. That's, that's the first thing that we're going to do with this is get rid of the, the fake moss. Because it, it might help hold some humidity in the soil, but we don't want our bonsai trees in, in potting soil anyway. So I'm going to get it out of there. And it looks like this tree was maybe somewhat recently potted up so I had, I had been to the store that I got this at recently and looked at their plants and they didn't have any of these so it definitely looks like this is a pretty recent addition because you've got a live branch underneath the moss so that's pretty exciting um, so I've never had one of these trees before so I'm going to be learning with you guys as we go along in the process of creating a bonsai tree out of this, you know, over the next however long it takes to make this really nice. Uh, one thing that I have noticed, I looked at some of the other trees and they grow branches out the top 
and they grow branches out the bottom. Got some lizards running around on the greenhouse making noise. Those guys are so cute. They'll chase each other around and you can hear them. Anyway, so, so it'll grow the, the branches upwards and it'll grow the branches downwards. So typically we want to take the branches off that are growing downwards and straight up, right? And we want to make somewhat like pads on the tops of the branches. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and look it over and see what stuff I absolutely don't want on this tree because for one it looks it looks terrible or it's in the wrong area or it's it's going to cause a problem later right so this branch right here which is looks like a pretty substantial branch is going right across this bent in the trunk so typically what we don't want is branches on the inside of a bent because it doesn't it doesn't really happen in nature so we want to get rid of those so that so that we don't have branches in the vents, right? Because it doesn't look natural. So anyway, with this branch, it also looks like it has been removed multiple times here. And this tree definitely looks like it backbuds very, very readily. And it looks like it backbuds in woody, um, woody conditions. It's not, it's not backbudding on the little branches. It's backbudding on mature um, parts of the tree. Now, obviously this is not a fully developed tree it's not a super mature tree but this is a relatively mature piece of um, piece of wood here so first thing I, I want to do is kind of look over the tree and see if there's something that just kind of sticks out at me that I want this tree to look like and so far what I'm seeing is it's it's kind of going this way and not so much this way so one thing I want to do is increase the this way and maintain this way. Because I, I do like it as wide as it is. It's not too wide. It's not too short. Some of the branches have been cut off at the, the place where the tree came from. So I think the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to remove this branch. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep it in some water. Because I'm going to try and propagate this as a new bonsai. So I'm going to cut it close to the trunk here and that's that's pretty cool. That could be a new tree pretty easily I think. So I'm going to take off the bottom leaves because you can't propagate with the leaves in the ground. Well, you, I, you might be able to because this this one's like under the soil. But I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to stick it in my water here. Got a couple other stuff in there waiting to be repotted. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take my knob cutters. And yeah, these knob cutters are ginormous, but they're the sharp ones. And I'm going to go to the wound where it was, where I removed that branch. And I'm going to remove it a little bit deeper than what they did previously. For one, that's going to make it not look like it's got a knob here. And two, it's going to alleviate some of the opportunity for another branch to grow here it could potentially still grow there i mean there's branches growing out of all over the place so it could potentially still grow there but i want to try and slow it down or possibly make it not grow another branch there because i definitely don't ever want a branch in the curve right there so i'm going to take it kind of slow and take off just little pieces at a time so that i can get down to the desired depth without cutting the whole branch off or the rest of the tree off. And yes, these are ginormous for this project. I need to get some smaller ones. The smaller ones I do have are really rusty and I need to do some maintenance on them. This is potentially something that we could do by, by carving. I've got my little utility knife. We could carve this. Just make sure and be nice and gentle and slow with it. Carve it out. And I'm carving all the way around the, the wound to 
try and keep it from growing a new branch by taking away the the place that the other branches did grow out of. Maybe that'll help. I'm not 100% sure. So we're going to learn together and find out if it works or if it doesn't work. And I will definitely be sure and update this video or this tree when new developments happen. And I'm going to grab some cut paste for this. I got a chopstick here. I'm going to take the chopstick and I'm going to make a flat edge on it. Kind of like a little spoon at the end of it. Kind of like that. So I can smear it on the tree a little bit easier. Just take a little bit of your cut paste. And this is just what I have. I got it on Amazon. It's not super expensive on there. I don't remember what the exact price was. The cut paste actually has hormones in it that help to heal the, the bark around the, the cut. And it also prevents uh, diseases from getting into your tree and pests. They use this stuff for grafting and all kinds of stuff. And it's all in Japanese, I think. I think that's Japanese. So I don't I don't know the actual name of it. I do know it's cut paste. So okay, so there's that piece. And then I've got this this piece right here. Definitely gonna get rid of all this too. So I don't need anything growing right here in this this section of the trunk right now. And it's got a pretty decent knob right here also. Now I'll let you know I'm not a huge fan of the really massive S curved bonsai trees. I just I, I'm not a huge fan of it. it. I'm not saying that it's wrong or that it's bad or anything like that. It's just not something I'm really into. So over time I'm going to try to make this not have such an, a curve in the trunk. But I have seen trees that are a lot more developed that look like they definitely had a curve in them like this, like really sharp curves. And they actually kind of fill out and look pretty cool. So, I mean, I could totally be wrong about not liking the trees with the S pat or the S curve pattern in them. And I'm, I'm basically just doing the same thing with this one as I did the last one. One thing that I've learned with bonsai trees, just thinking about it just because I'm, I'm taking my time with this and, and I, I kind of take my time with all my trees. But something I've learned about bonsai trees from somebody else that I watch is if you, if you take your time with every tree that you work on and work on it like it's a million dollar tree, there's a good chance down the road it could be a million dollar tree. If you work on a tree and you work on it like it's a five dollar tree, or in this case it was about sixteen dollars, then you're gonna keep a sixteen dollar tree. You know, and if you if you treat it like it's a million dollars, maybe get a million dollar tree out of it. So I always try and work on my trees like I'm working on a million dollar tree. Maybe, maybe that'd be, that'd be really cool to have a really nice Kukan tea tree. I, I looked them up and they, there are some really cool looking ones out there. So, okay, so this piece here, I'm going to leave this because I want this to grow out right here. 
because I want to thicken up this section of the tree. I'm not taking this off either because I want to thicken up the bottom of the tree. I am going to repot this today. So I'm not going to leave it in this potting soil. So we'll raise it up to where this is sticking out of the ground. But I want to leave that and I want to leave that so I can thicken up the bottom of the tree. So then the other things that I'm going to be looking at here is where it's growing stuff that could potentially add to the tree. So this one looks like it might have been wired. It might not have been, but it's going like straight down here. And this one's kind of going upwards. And right here, you've got one that's like going straight down. And that just, it looks weird to me. So I'm, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove the whole thing. Because I've got another, another branch right at the end here that could potentially be a branch there. And I, I think that I want a branch coming out of here. I'm not 100% sure yet. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I mean, it might thicken up this bend a little too much. It might, might not. I'm, I'm going to leave this one. Actually, I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to leave this one. I'm going to take this one off the bend altogether. So I don't want this bend to get weird looking. It looks like there was a branch coming out right here. A larger branch. Probably about the same thickness of the trunk. You can see the inside of where the branch was. And this stuff is really sticky, so careful when you're putting it on not to get it all over yourself. I might wait to put the cut paste on later. Uh, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to take off a couple of these inner leaves right here. So I can see more of the structure of the inside of the tree. And I'm going to leave this branch right here. I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep the branch that's going down right here. And I'm going to remove the branch that's going straight up right here. like that. I'm going to save this. I don't know how big of a cutting you have to have to make a, a tree out of this, but it's kind of cool to have a whole bunch of them. We'll find out. And I'm going to take this off. Wait, I said I was going to leave that, didn't I? So from, from this angle, I don't like it. From this angle, it doesn't look so bad. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna leave it for now. And then we'll figure it out. So right up under here, I've got some really large leaves that I'm gonna take off so I can see inside here. This isn't the time of year to be defoliating anything. It is still um, early January. So I don't want to defoliate it, but I want to take off some of the, the interior leaves. Kind of like what you would do with the juniper cleaning out all the, the stuff that isn't going to come or isn't going to help the composition of the tree. Take all that stuff out so that you can see what you're doing. These leaves seem like they just pull right off. Yeah, they do. I don't even need to cut them off. One thing I found with trees that back bud like this one does, kind of like the elm trees do this, um, ficus trees kind of do, and the, the sarissa trees, the, uh, the sarissa Jap japanica, they kind of do also, and when they grow like this, where they they grow a couple of leaves and then they grow the branch, if you take those leaves off, and or wait till it grows the third leaf or whatever and pitch that off, won't grow a branch there for a while. I'm not saying it won't ever, but it, it won't for a while. So you can kind of alleviate the extra all over the place. So there's there's a couple of leaves right here. That's kind of what I'm talking about with the pinching the leaves off. Because you can just grab those, pinch them off, and then now you don't have a branch there. I usually kind of rub it with my finger 
see if I can rub off the the spot where the leaf the branches started coming out of and I don't know if it 100% fixes it but it seems to help so I want this to bush out or not not like a bush but I want it to get a little bit more foliage thicken out so I'm going to try and leave as much as I can branch wise on the tree right now because I kind of want to watch how it grows to see um, it's, you know see its growing patterns so I can determine what types of action to take later on when I'm trimming it so that I can know if I leave that it's going to do this if I take that off it's going to do this so kind of one one reason why I started doing videos also is so that I could do that so I could kind of document what I'm doing so that I know later on go go back and watch the videos and I'm like oh hey that's what I did on that one and this is how it looks now so it's kind of it is helpful Basically, I'm just opening up some some space here, taking the leaves off that I don't need. There's a little tiny branch right on the side here. I might just let that grow for now. This tree does have quite a bit of foliage, which is really nice. Like I said, I don't want to take off too much. I just want to be able to see what I'm doing in here. See if I need to remove some more branches or not. But I think I am going to remove this one going straight up here. There's a couple more branches off to the side that I'll leave for now. So it looks more like that. And these trees do flower also. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. They got like a really cute little white flower, kind of like the Sarissa's. So this this leaf here is right in the, the crotch of this part of the tree. So I'm gonna take that out all the all together. Can't really get in there and pinch it without damaging all this, so. I want to cut it as close to the tree as possible there. Got another leaf growing on the inside of this band right here. It's kind of hard to see in here. And I'm going to cut off the ends where they had made previous cuts. I'm going to clean those up a little bit. I think, I think I want to leave these branches on the top because I want a little bit flatter canopy here. I also think I'm going to leave this one and let that one thicken up so that I can get a little bit more canopy over here. Yeah, so this, this time of year, I don't want to do too much work and you know kill the tree or set it way back so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and I'm going to grab a pot for this got a couple of options here not sure if I like this one or this one really I don't it doesn't have a hole in the bottom of this one so I'll, I'll have to drill a hole in it if I choose this one but basically that's what that would pretty much look like It's not super fancy, but it's not terrible. And this this was actually a centronella candle. And I burned the candle and cleaned it out. So that's what, what all this is. It, I'd have to really clean it up too. I think I'm gonna skip this one for now. Might do this one for the time being. It's it's not a really expensive pot. It's it cracked outside over the winter. Or well actually last week I think is when 
started doing that. And I just took the, the plant out of here because it didn't make it from the cold weather. So that's why this pot looks terrible. But I don't think that looks too bad because I could plant it kind of on the side. I could plant it even hanging over. I don't know, I don't usually pick a, a front for my trees. And when you have a rectangular pot, you kind of have to pick a front. Now this really doesn't have much of a base on the tree yet. So that's something I'm gonna have to work at work on. But just going off of the, the direction of the tree, kind of looks like that's gonna be my best, excuse me, I got the hiccups. Oh, best bet for now. I'm going to grab a screen for this because I didn't do that yet. Ta -da. That works. And grab some soil. Alright, so I'm going to set this aside for now. I'm going to take this out of the pot, see what the roots look like. And like I said, I did just water it because it was completely dry. So it looks like it's got a decent amount of roots in the pot you know being a nursery tree basically so we're gonna take the, the soil off of this and this this soil feels like it's mostly peat peat moss yeah it's like the seed starting soil I'm gonna be careful with this branch here see if I can yep oh, that's not a branch <laughs> not a good branch it is still alive. I don't see any roots, but I'm going to try it. We'll try it. Try anything. So it's definitely potted really deep in the soil. And if this is really new, it would make sense that there's not a whole bunch of roots on the trunk. But if this has been in this pot for a couple of months, I mean, even up to or as little as several weeks, I would think, it might grow roots on the, the trunk of the tree being this deep in the pot. It actually does have kind of a decent root base on this. I don't want to damage the roots at all. I don't know how these recover from roots and I didn't see any information from what I looked up as to how hardy these trees are. It says that they're a little tricky to take care of. But a little tricky, I've got a lot of trees that are really tricky, so I'm not too worried about it, but I don't really know what they mean by that, being a little tricky. So that's kind of what the root base looks like. I'm going to separate the bottom out a little bit, but I don't want to really take any of the roots off the bottom here, unless I need to. It looks like there might be a one root in there that's not alive. I don't want to keep that. I also don't want to completely bare root this tree if I can help it. It was definitely grown in something very shallow to get its roots, which isn't a bad thing. That's actually really smart. I do kind of the same thing when I'm growing my cuttings because I grow them in the the nursery trays yeah so this this piece here is definitely not alive so I'm gonna get in there with my root printing scissors I'm gonna try and get it as close to the base of the tree as possible because yeah, that's definitely not alive all right so that looks all right there it's got some decent roots Going across here, there's a decent one right here. Um, decent, a decent one here and here. So it's not, it's not too bad. And the nabari is actually spread more this way than this way. So putting the tree in the pot this way is probably the best, best way. After taking the, after taking the soil off. 
likes of that. It's basically how I'm going to plant it in the pot. I always look at different planting angles, see if I want to change the angle of it. I definitely don't want to do anything like that, or that extreme. I do kind of like leaning trees though. It's really, it's really interesting to me when trees lean over. So I am going to plant it at kind of a leaning angle this direction. And obviously this is the first potting, so I can change I can change things up next time I repot it. I am gonna put a good layer of soil. Must have got my soil a little wet earlier. See if I could spread the roots out from the tree. I might even plant it a little bit farther forward in the pot because I'm. I'm I'm not sure which side of the pot's the best side. It's kind of a messed up pot right now. So put it like that. That'll work pretty good. Wondering. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab a couple of chopsticks real quick. Every time I go out to a Chinese restaurant, I keep my chopsticks so I can do cool stuff like this with my trees. So I'm going to use my, my wire cutters for this. So I'm going to take the chopstick, I'm going to put it under the edge of the pot, I'm going to push down on the roots with it, and then I'm going to find out on this side where I need to cut it. So I'm pushing it all the way to the edge because this has a, a lip underneath of it, so I'm going to cut it right here. And I'm going to take my chopstick to hold the tree up in place. So I'm going to put it under that edge of the pot, get it under this edge of the pot, and then move the chopstick tree actually into place. Now, now you've got a tree that's solid in the pot and you won't be able to see that. It's not going to damage this root because this root is actually already sticking up like that. Turn it just a little bit. There we go. Just like that. All right. As you can see, there wasn't a ton of roots on this tree. So I could have potentially waited to repot this tree, maybe until spring or later on when the roots were a little bit stronger or a little bit more roots in the pot. But that's that soil is just, it wasn't very good soil for growing your roots out. The bonsai soil is a lot better and I can I can give it the proper amount of water in the bonsai soil better than in the peat moss. Although obviously you can see the tree grew in the peat moss. So it did change the angle of the tree to where it's kind of going down a little bit, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that that angle of potting. So I mean I could I could raise it up by adding soil underneath the tree. And my chopstick. I got special chopsticks that I use for repotting. They're, they're a metal chopstick. I, I order a lot of my stuff from uh, Bonsai Jack. 
like the um it wasn't the pumice it was the lava rock the lava rock that i get i got it from bonsai jack and they'll send you a, a cool metal chopstick with it it's pretty awesome so i think i am going to change this a little bit i'm going to raise it up my jam some soil up underneath there see if i can get it to sit up a little bit more it's a good chance it won't it doesn't seem like there's much space underneath. It, it is helping actually a little bit. Get some more up underneath it here. But I don't really want to damage the roots and I don't want to push the roots that are sticking out up underneath the trunk of the tree. So I'm going to try and be really careful with this process here. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's going to really do much. That, that kind of did, but it also kind of made it look exactly level with the pot. Let's see if I can lift it up a little bit more. You could always later on add more of a bend to the trunk also. So if this doesn't work out, then we'll just let it grow for a while and we'll, we'll just bend the trunk. Because it didn't have a ton of roots, I don't need to really pack a lot of the soil in too much because it's there's nothing to really pack it into. But I'm going to go around this edge because there is some roots over here. You get some of the bonsai soil into the, the roots here. Try and get some of it into where the, the peat moss is at on the tree also. So as you repot it, you can mix you can mix the bonsai soil that you're putting in there into the potting soil that came into the in the tree and Eventually, each time you repot it, you're doing that and you're pushing the, the other stuff out of the tree. All right, so that I think is going to do it. I'll take the tip of this branch up here. This looks terrible. There we go. I think that's going to do it for now. I'm going to put some water on it. Just my trusty sprayer with uh, I got a goldfish pond that I get the water out of. I'll let the, the rain fill it up and then the goldfish do their work on it and then I'll use it on my trees. It seems to do pretty well. What I'm doing really is just trying to get all of the soil wet all the way to the bottom. For one, the tree was dry when I got it, and that's that's kind of a big deal. If you get a tree that's completely dry, and it shouldn't be completely dry, make sure when you repot it that you're, you're watering it really, really well, or water the tree for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks, and then do the work in repotting. Kind of did this for video purposes but also i'm gonna make sure and keep a good eye on it and make sure i'm watering it really well for the next couple of weeks to make sure that it's absorbing enough water because i some trees you can tell if they're not watered enough the branches will start sagging or their leaves will start sagging i'm not sure if this does that so and i don't really want to find out yet because I want it to get healthy first and then I'll find out if it does that later on because it definitely gets warm here during the summer and sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge to keep your trees fully watered during the summertime 
So we'll find out. We'll definitely find out. So the water's coming out the bottom here. So that means that it's it's plenty watered. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool tree. I'm actually really excited about this tree. I say that about all the trees I get, but I'm really excited about this. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave a, a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And see you on the next one.